And this is what we're talking about. People are like, oh, I just want to make $5,000 a month. I'm like, you dream too small. Your yeah. dreams suck. You need to go back and dream better and drink, dream bigger. And because like you're going to normalize such a low standard that once you hit 5K, you're going to be so unfulfilled. You think that's going to set you free. You're going to be so lazy at that point. Like, oh, I thought I was going to be happier. Well, no, the money's not going to, 5,000 a month is going to do nothing for you. You're going to be, because numbers are infinite. It never stops. You've got to dream bigger than that. Over 1,700 new millionaires are created every single day in the U.S. alone, and more than double that across the globe. They're people from all walks of life, most of them people just like you and I. So the big question is this, how are so many people who didn't inherit money or have any special advantages overcoming the odds and becoming millionaires? That's the question, and this show will give you the answers. My name is Jeff Lerner, and welcome to Millionaire Secrets. And welcome back to another episode of the Millionaire Secrets Show. It's, you know, I always say I'm excited to be back with you. Uh, today, let's just throw a little extra something on top of that because of my guest, Jordan Metterick, uh, or I just call him Jordo. We're like, he's one of my best friends in the world. So um, it's not often that you get to like be at work and basically your job is to like hang out with one of your best friends for an hour or whatever this ends up being. So uh, I guess I'm at work, but I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful to have you on the show. Jordo, welcome to Millionaire Secrets. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Man, what a what what an incredible trajectory this whole thing's been. And I see where you're taking things. And I mean, I think it's just a matter of time before the whole world knows. You know, and I love I love what you just said about that. You've got a shirt that says like professionally unemployed. Successfully that, unemployed. Successfully unemployed. I was telling my wife about the two. I was like, the greatest joy in my life is not having a job. It is one of my greatest like wife, kids, faith, family, right? There's that segment, but then it's like, man, I love not having a job. It's like the best thing ever and could not be more proud. To it be really honest. is. It really is. And, and here's the thing. I, I work harder and you do too. I'm, you know, you're a fan of what I'm doing. I'm a huge fan of what you're doing. We're going to talk about that. But like we both work harder than most people who have jobs. But so we're not saying it's easy or it's fast or it, you know, no, no special skills required. Like, no, it's like actually successfully unemployed means, uh, you know, I probably do the work of three jobs, but I do it always with pretty much almost always with a smile on my face and I'm grateful and privileged to do it. And I think that's what you're saying, right? Yeah. I mean, there's, I feel like there's a, a perpetual notion in the world that like everyone's waiting for their big break. Everyone's waiting for this one thing to set them free it's like the one thing that can set you free is making a choice to set yourself free. And anyone can make that the choice to make that pivot. And that's what we all want is choice. And uh, I think people decide to, to be, man, it's amazing how, how much is everything that's happening in the world right now is very, uh, gosh, just perpetuates this common theme that's so pivotal, I think, in a person's life is, is about this concept of, like you have to control your own life and your own destiny and make choices for yourself, you know, and, and very few people make that shift to do that. It's not for everyone, right? I mean, I've got 12 employees. I need, I need all 12 of them. Mm -hmm. And we, everyone reports to someone, everyone at the top reports to the person at the very bottom, right? Or the shareholders or whatever. So you're always yeah. reporting to someone, but I think choice is the, uh, that's the goal. I, 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 I totally agree. And you know, even this show, it's called Millionaire Secrets, right? I mean, so I guess the letter of the role here is to, well, share the secrets that help you become a millionaire. Mm -hmm. But it's really a lot more than that that's baked into what our mission here is for the show. Like, I want to give people an excellent, you know, the, the, the clarity and the drive to create, you know, excellence in their life. And here's the thing. Excellence is a choice. And when, when properly applied, excellence creates choice like you said, but excellence is a stern taskmaster. And that's why it's so much damn work. Um, 
Yeah. So yeah, you, you embody that to a T and I, I feel like, you know, I know we're going to have an amazing conversation in the next hour because I've spent hundreds of hours of my life talking to you and no one of them has ever not been amazing. So I know it's going to be great, at least selfishly for me, I'm going to have a lot of fun, but I think we Heck should yeah. give some context so that everyone can get the full value. I here. think we should. Um, you and I have known each other. Has it been 10 years? Not, not eight, nine? About eight, eight or nine years. Yeah. I mean, I, I actually worked for you in a different company um, before we even met like at all. You didn't even, I didn't know who you were and you didn't know who I was and you were. Kind somebody, of somebody hired you, but it wasn't me. Yeah. And you were in like a wing of the company and I was like way over on the other side. Right. Yeah. But as it turned out, you were, you were doing video work mm -hmm. and most of the video that you were editing had, or a lot of it had me in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was editing Jeff Lerner videos and all these front end videos and, and, and all that kind of stuff and making a lot of the collateral, the, the marketing material. And we didn't meet for two years. Yeah. That's kind of crazy to think of it. So you actually got to know me, at least the part of me that I show on camera uh, yeah, yeah. before I ever met you. But, uh, but then we met and then, you know, one thing, gosh, we've had so many twists and turns. We probably don't need to relive all of them for people to have full context, but you know, you stayed in that industry or, or, or I left and went and did another thing. I actually left and started my agency, right? right? So we were doing like internet marketing and building funnels and that's why I was shooting videos and you were editing the videos and we were assembling them into funnel, sales funnels. And I went and started an agency. You stayed in that space for you know, another year or two, became a, a rock star in your own right. I went off and did an agency that was a, a big success for me and we really didn't, didn't even talk much for several years. And then what, 2000, late 2016, or we probably started talking in. I had come mm -hmm. back into, or I had come into the education space. 2017, I think you were looking for a get, you were between gigs or maybe I just poached you from whatever you were doing. I don't know. But I called you at some point and said, hey, Jordan, uh, I, obviously I'm a friend. I'm also a fan. You have an amazing skill set. And I want you to talk a little bit more about some of those skill sets because I think they're so in, informative as to who you, you know, how you do what you do now. I mean, things like being a filmmaker and, you, you know, your charitable stuff and what you're, but the point is you were a badass at these things that are super valuable. And I was like, man, why don't you come do this with me? And then we were business partners for a year, year and a half. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's almost like we're on this like weird parabolic curve of coming back together and then like separate. Yeah. We're yeah, just yeah. <laughs> We're like the, the couple that can't totally quit each other or something. <laughs> <laughs> we always end up like, and even inside of like when we were working together, we'd also do another in thing inside of that, which would be yeah. like this little side. Deal. But yeah, it's like, I, I've always, I've always thought you'd be great at, I mean, you'd hate it and you'd never do it, but you'd be great in like network marketing. Cause you can recruit anybody to do anything. You have this charismatic vibe that it was like, I, just so everyone knows, and, and I don't know if this is going to be cut into a, a soundbite or if anyone will watch the whole thing or, or whatever, but for, for the context of this, you, you not only had me come, I literally worked for free for three months just yeah. to get to, to, to like escape what I was doing kind of, and cause it wasn't so, super fulfilling to me mm -hmm. and it worked kind of for free for you for just to get a shot, right? To come. So you're like, Hey, let's met, let's, let's try this. And then you enrolled me in this vision and it was so great that I was like, I'll just come do it for free. Like, let me give yeah. it a trial. Let me, let me build a bunch of stuff for you and see how it works. And, and then you had your first big event. I attended that and I was like, man, let's go. I want to get into this. And so eventually we became partners and, and have had lots of really great wins and experiences together. Yeah. And I've learned so much from you through that time that I'm going to share some more about. I, I what I like, what's, what's really fun and sort of has like a full circle feel for me about this conversation is when what you're alluding to when I, I had started that thing back in 2017 that you came and really, like you say, just added a ton of contribution to for three months. Um, that was the seeds and the, the, the beginnings of what exactly what I'm doing now, which is Entra, which is you know, I, I re reasonably think I'll be doing for the rest of my life because it's all I want to do, which is teach, lead, and inspire people about what's possible in the world. You know, if you adopt certain mindset and attitude and, and develop personality traits that allow you to just seize opportunity. Probably for the next 
40 years or however long I live, it'll, it'll be largely digital and internet based. I don't know that that's going away, but it really doesn't even matter. The point is, if you become a certain way in this world, you'll, you'll never want for anything. And uh, what I've seen in the time that we've worked together or, or been, you know, been close since whatever that was, summer of 2017, and here it is, what is it, summer of 2020? So three years. Over that three-year period, I would say, for whatever reason, and, and actually maybe we can dissect this through this conversation, both you and me have really become at least the beginnings of what I think we're, we're truly capable of. Hmm. Over the last three years, there was, there's been something about whatever we've been focused on for the last three years that I have some theories about why this is, um, that we've both now, here we are summer 2020, and not, I probably shouldn't you know, date stamp this recording, but it's summer 2020 um, for whatever that's worth. In the process of doing I, what I could see being from either one of us, like lifelong good work. You know, there's, I feel no need to get out of the lane that I'm in. And, and I get the sense you don't either. Yeah. I think there's like a, um, I can say on the short end of the stick, I am in such alignment with who I, I want to be mm -hmm. and not operating as my current self, but, um, operating at the level that I want to be. Right. And I think it's how you become that person. And what I think is so critical that I hope everyone takes to heart. If anyone takes anything away from this is, is that kind of be, do have mentality. Like if you're not getting what you want, you very likely aren't the person you need to be first. And so our pursuit, our journey is the becoming the person. I think it's uh, Brooke Castillo said, talked about this concept of the, the ability to have, a, a, like a capacity to have. Hmm. So when really broke people go out and they start buying lotto tickets and buying crazy biz op make money online offers and doing all this stuff that they think is this fast, quick way to make money, if anything positive does happen to them, especially in the lotto mentality, if they win, they're broke after three years. They're, they're in worse, they're probably in worse debt than they ever were because they don't have this like, they don't have a capacity to have. They aren't the person who can wield that sword. Like they, this, that sword is too heavy. So I think even through our journey, I'd say, speak for myself, my own journey that every step, I'm going to write a book called 21 Jobs. It's almost like up to this point, I've had 21 jobs that in each huh. one, was like, was never what I needed to be, but they all add up to being the person that I am now that is who I want to be. Right. And, you know, we were talking on uh, before we hit record and we probably should have just been recording the whole time. Cause I feel like everything we talk about here is just so maybe existential, if not uh, just valuable on a surface level, but it's like, man, there's just so much opportunity. There's so much choice. And the choice isn't about, hey, which, which, which tactic am I going to use? What little secret hack? What, like you mentioned about the secrets thing. It's like, there's not one secret. There's not one tactic. There's not one weird little magic trick that you can pull that's going to just set you up, right? It just, that's not the case. You need to become a person that says, I've got all these tools in my arsenal. What am I going to deploy when I need it in the right situation, right? And how do I network? How do I grow? How do I market? And I think... Um, people have more of that inside of them than they realize. And it just needs to be your weaknesses exposed. And just like, well, you work out every day, literally ripping muscle so that it can rebuild mm -hmm. and to be something stronger. And so we need to expose those weaknesses that, that maybe we have rip it and then let it come back together and become stronger. So it's like every battle wound will be known by our scars, right? We we're known now for, everything that's happened uh, up to this point, right? And I think everyone can lean on that, on their past to create their own version of themselves they want to be. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, lo I love that concept of 21 jobs. Um, I actually just shot a video right before we did this. You know, I, I shoot videos. I do at least one or two training videos a week for YouTube. And in this one, it was about what we can learn from Olympic athletes as entrepreneurs. And my, my take on Olympic athletes is, you know, they only get to perform every four years. Mm. Even most of the gold medal winners, you can't, you can't tell me who won the gold at the last Olympics in 99 out of 100 events. All we remember pretty much is like Michael Phelps and the dream team. 
Yeah, um, and like Usain Bolt, and that's and Usain Bolt, the yeah. only people I can even name. Right? And even even when I was doing the in, the little sixty second Instagram version of the video, what's funny about that is those are the people I said. I said, "What do Jeff Lerner, Usain Bolt, Michael Jordan, and Michael Phelps have in common?" Because I knew that, and it's that we we're 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 focused on what it takes to win a gold medal. And I was like, "Well, three of us actually did, and one of us really sucks at sports, but." We were all we're all interested in this, but I did that because literally those are the only three names I could think of, of of people where I immediately they would go, oh, they all won gold medals. If I'd said like, you know, I don't I don't even know what to say. Like whoever won the the <laughs> women's I don't know team gymnastics water polo. Monique, Mo, there's a Monique something. Yeah, the yeah like the Dream Five, the Fab Five, or yeah, the spunky little girl who was like super sass and awesome. I've, but there's two of them. She was super famous when it happened, and now I don't even remember her name. Yeah, so that's I my point. It's not about the glory, man. It's not about the becoming a rock star and the celebrity. There's something about Olympic athletes that's like, I mean, people say, "Oh, well, you got to be obsessed." Like they're they're insane, man. They're next level, right? And I, what I was saying is the thing about them is when you think of all the pressure that it only they only get one shot every four years. And my, my takeaway from learning, because I did like a couple hours of research on this video, is they create enough consistent and systematic and incrementally increasing pain in a way that they can control over the course of long enough periods of time that when it's that one moment that's got the incredible pain, and I'm, I'm using the term pain to mean the discomfort of like the whole world is watching, they're so conditioned to operate with pain, both the physical from the exertion and the emotional from the, the pressure. They're like, it's just another day. Because every day for four years, they've been systematically ratcheting up the amount of pain in, in a controlled way in their own life that while to us, it looks like it's one day every four years for them, it's just another day. Yeah. And that that's what you kind of just described only for you, it was 10 years and it was 21 jobs and it was systematically eliminating the weaknesses yeah. that were stopping you from being the guy that could do what you're doing. You know, the guy that could take, I mean, I'll, 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 I want to, let me properly introduce you. Jordan is the CEO and creator of a software platform called Drop Funnels that's basically emerging as a massive dragon slayer of a platform to go out into the self-serve funnel builder SaaS world and address a lot of issues that weren't really being talked about because frankly, there was no point in talking about them because there was no solution. And you've gone out there, I mean, you've done a wildly improbable thing, which is to get traction taking on the giants of an industry that's pretty well established at this point and in which most of the upstarts are these really just anonymous, obscure, feature-based companies that are, you know, based in some other country. And so they come out and their USP is just that they're cheap. It's just a me too product. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you, I mean, you've emerged, dude. Like people, I, you say, I mean, even in my vernacular, when I'm out there on the, on the internet talking about funnel builders, I basically will say, I mean, here's what I'll say. Like, forgive me for mentioning some, you know, potentially some competitors. I'll be like, you know, guys, you sales funnels, you got to learn sales funnels. And I'm talking about this isn't 2008 when you had to learn code and do it all yourself. There's platforms now that you can use platforms like click funnels and lead pages and drop funnels that'll help you do this and this and that. Bro, I'm not doing that because you're my friend. No. <laughs> I'm no. doing that because those are the three things that come to mind when I'm improvising yeah. a video. And what I don't stop and say is actually the third one I said is owned by my friend and it's the best, but I, I think it, I mean, it's freaking killer what you're doing and it's come out of nowhere. Yeah, man. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's like, uh, yeah, man, what a journey it's been too. I, I've always felt like, I love the way you just said that. You said like, there's no one was talking about it cause there was no solution. And I think, uh, if anyone is looking for that one thing, that one thing to go out there and crush, right. Just look for something to just solve a problem. I put that up as a status just recently. Like, you want to get out there and crush it? Go solve a problem, period. Like, I used to be a sham wow salesman when I was 22 or something. Like, the sham wows, like the towels and all that. So, like, eight months ago, you're saying. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm not going to date myself. But 
it was a while ago. And, but learning how to sell taught me how, like just the other day, I sold a $15,000 funnel. Like I will build someone's funnel for him for, for 15 K. Right. And then a couple days later, people want to move some stuff from here to there. They don't want to do it. And you're like, okay, I know how to close a sale, but all closing a sale is, is, knowing the psychology of what someone wants and delivering a solution and doing that for them, right? Help, helping solve a problem. So drop funnels is an extension of that, kind of a mass scale solution to what was the, the problem. But yeah, I think in, in large part, um, I think everyone needs to have one piece of IP because I think that can truly set you free. Your IP will set you free. Hmm. Create one thing that does one thing for one person. And if it does that one thing for one person, it will do that thing for a hundred thousand people, for a million people. Cause no one on the planet, you know, this is overarching and overgeneralized. No single person on the planet has a singular problem. No one has a unique problem. Unique problems do not exist. So if you can solve a, a, a problem for one unique person, you are solving that problem for a mass, for a sea of people who, who have the same thing. And by the way, you can be person number one. Yes, exactly. Fact, I, dude, I was solving my problem. You probably should I, be number, person yeah. number one, right? Yeah. yeah. I was trying to, I was, I was literally trying to clone. Um, it was when we were, uh, you know, working together, I was trying to get a new authority site up, like a new jordanmetric.com or whatever, right? And I went, I tried to clone Neil Patel's website. And it was just because I love how he does it. I love his, how he thinks. And, and he's a big uh, kind of influencer. And he's like, consults for Google and Facebook with their SEO stuff. And he's a genius. And anyway, and I know you've met him too. It's pretty cool. But I was trying to clone that site. Like, why can't, why can't someone with, who doesn't want to use a dev team, a programming team, designers, having hundreds of thousands, like, I mean, I was finding hosting and plugins and themes and all these things and duct taping them together. And I, it took me two months and I couldn't even get close to what he had produced. In fact, I know the theme he's using. I know all the plugins he's using. I know the <laughs> infrastructure. And you can't do that if you don't have a dedicated developer full-time working yeah. on your site. I'm like, no one wants to do that. So I built drop funnels really to solve my own problems, which was like, okay, now I can launch an authority site in a day. I can launch a sales funnel in a day and launch a, a course, you know, sans creating the video training content or whatever right, right. in under a day. I mean, it's so fast because I think we're in the era where people want two things at speed and control. Like I need to be able to control it in one place. I want to have my, my contextual mind put things in boxes. I think it's how, especially guys, they say that men are waffles and women are spaghetti. So maybe women can multitask and think about right. a million things. But for me, I want it in one box. I want to do it quite quick. I want to know that it can do what I want it to do. And I want it to be fast. So yeah. that's, that's what really kicked it off. I love that. I mean, and, and as a digital marketer, I, I, appreciate it in a very experiential way of like, yes, I, I've had that frustration. I mean, I'm, I'm having somebody redesign my blog right now. And frankly, I'm going, why the hell am I not just using drop funnels? <laughs> I have all those. And, and here's the thing. It's because I have all those things you said. I have yeah. full-time developers. I have a full-time designer. I have all the people. I have content. I don't even write my own content. So, so that's the thing. I've gotten lazy it's a privilege. I appreciate, I value it. I've stayed humble, but I have gotten lazy. I've worked really hard for the privilege of being lazy. Yep. But if I guarantee if it was, if it was five years ago when I was still the one posting the posts and, and or structuring the pages and dealing with the CSS and, and dealing with all that stuff, I would, I'd be on drop funnels in a heartbeat because, and frankly, I don't know, separate conversation, but there's still a why the hell aren't you using drop? I actually have a drop funnels account. Like, why am I even still monkeying with my WordPress blog? Ah, because I, but whatever, separate conversation. The point is, it's, you've solved that problem for, I mean, millions of people. And, and, and I love that you started with yourself and you, you, what you just said, solve one problem for one person helped me understand why I'm having success right now. Because actually, the only reason I did what I, did, what I do, and in fact, the only reason I've done what I've done for the last decade is because I love the digital home-based business industry. I love the fact that you can go on the internet and create these businesses that, ought, that give you back freedom. But I hate the industry as a whole. Oh, 
I hate it. It's so money focused. It's so full of BS. It's, it's so, so scammy, driven man. by scammy, instant overnight results, mindsets. Nobody wants to work. No, like, and I'm, using, I'm now it's my turn. I'm using overly general language. Nobody wants to work. Everybody's full of crap. Everybody wants it to sound easy. The reason I was good at it is because I came in and A, I'm smart. B, I worked my ass off. C, I worked my ass off longer than most people will sustain working their ass off without a reward. D, I'm really good at blocking out haters and doubters and the people around me that tell me I'm an idiot and crazy and I'm crazy because I'd already, I was already such a loser. I didn't have much to lose when I started. Like there's all these qualitative reasons why I was able to succeed in spite of what a BS industry it is. But I didn't, and, and neither did you. We didn't succeed because the, the digital home base industry, home based business industry is just such a high integrity stand up industry that's really telling everyone what it actually takes. Man, and actually, I've, for all those things, those are all things that I don't know if I've ever told you that I've always looked up to you for is the, that level of, of, of hard work. And I don't know that anyone can outwork Jeff Lerner. I've, I've never seen that happen. I don't know anyone who wakes up earlier. I don't know anyone who does as much. I, don't, I honestly, I just don't. I mean, I think, so I think, man, is this hard? Well, Jeff would probably do it. So I should probably be able to do it. Uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And honestly, Entra, you, you, you put a, a pin in it. I'm like, now I get why Entra works because I wanted to create a company that introduced people to the world of digital home-based business, but also continue solving my own problem of making the majority of the conversation be what it actually needs to be, which is about who you need to be and how you need to be to actually be successful. And, and you're going to lose. And it and didn't probably, exist. It didn't uh -huh. exist. So I went and created yeah. it. Same as you. Yeah. And, and because of that, the, the sad part industry-wide is that you're going to lose people in terms of conversions because you're not that hype up scheme because everyone's just doing the top. Let me top this guy. How hypey can I make this? How big promise? How can I? And then, it's just like, that's why everyone hates the space. You know, I was yeah. talking with Mike Dillard the other day and he's like, man, I just, I'm, I am so glad I'm moving away from it because it doesn't exist anywhere in the world, but in the internet marketing space, like in the, in the industry where there's mm -hmm. uber hype and massive promises. And, but also what, what are the only companies really being completely shut down by, by the FTC or an uncompliant and all these uh, regulatory issues. It's, it's internet based businesses, right? And a large yeah. percentage of people jumping online are kind of biting the hook of how simple people paint it to be. And it's just not true, but what you're going to start attracting and the people that, that we're attracting now is people who recognize that there's not a magic flick of the switch money shoots out of your computer. And like, th thank goodness we're in this new era away from the Lambos and the mansions and the, it's no. okay to own a Lam um, Lambo and it's okay to have a mansion. It's okay to have everything you want. Uh, right now I'm looking up, I just bought two investment houses and the, the income from those two pro properties, I'm going to reinvest into a place in, in Florida. That's going to be like beachfront. So I'm looking at beachfront. It's great to, to build that and have what you want and, and shoot for those things and create the life that you want. And anyone can do that by saying, I'm willing to do the whole bottom 10 list you have on that poster behind you and not just focus at the top of that iceberg. I, I literally, I keep this document. I, so I have a, I have a, 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 a my cousin, he's got a relative who like has this, uh, he has a, re a relative who's kind of like crazy where he's like, I always believe that they're, they, they're coming for me. Like mm -hmm. the men in black coats or whatever. So he has it, no matter where you are in his house, he's got like a 2000 square foot house. You, you don't know it unless, you're him, but you're within three feet of a gun in his house. Yes. So you're sitting on the couch watching TV. You don't know, but like under, strapped under the armrest of the couch is a gun, right? Because he always thinks they're coming for him. You know who I always think is coming for me? Is laziness, pride, mm -hmm. satisfaction, comfort, backing off, taking it easy. I always think that's coming for me. I'm never more than arms reach away from my values. And number one is we eagerly do hard things well. And there's a whole series. I, I just, this like literally, I'm actually, my assistant's framing one right now to go on the wall behind me. I have one at my conference table. I have one at my stand-up desk. I have one at my piano. I have a thousand square foot office. I have five of these documents. I can't ever be more physically than like three or four feet from my values because I might forget because of what you're saying. Like, 
And you think about the, what the FTC is doing, they're profiling. Mm, that's Just right. like the cop who's sitting there going, well, yep. what skin tone should I pull over because they're most likely to have weed in the car? Yeah, what is the likelihood that's right of that or not, person doing that? Right. What the FTC is doing is what type of business should I look under the hood because they're most likely to be full of shit? Yep. Internet businesses. Yep. Internet businesses that are talking to people about how to make money with an internet business. Yeah, and, and it's the cop sitting outside the bar waiting for people to pull out. Yeah. That's what they're doing. And if yeah. I were the FTC, if I were doing anything in that world, I know it's like, it's just such a gross space. And like, if I were them, I'd be hunting it all day because it's too easy. It's, it's like, yeah, it is. And yet, and yet here you are saying, hey, I have some software that can actually make building a digital business a whole lot easier, which is an implicit statement that, hey, I'm going to help you make some money. And I have a business that's saying, hey, I'll help, help you really understand what it takes, what the tools are, and how to use them to build a digital business and be successful, which mm -hmm. is an implicit statement to say, I'm going to help you make some money online. We're two guys that are actually having that. I don't know. I mean, knock on wood, feeling pretty darn bulletproof and fearless because we're not deceiving anyone. Imagine yeah. that. Right. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny it's how you don't real, have to. And we know it's real because I did it and you did it. It's not like we don't know if you can actually go on the internet and create income. There's a $2 trillion digital economy in the world. It's not clearly, it's not hard. I mean, tap it, tap into a little bit of it and you're good. Dude, like when I get a spare hour, I kind of go into like, that may, I don't know if it's about you. There's so much opportunity and so many things you can do that anyone could do. Um, that I go into kind of like a panic mode when I get spare time. Cause I'm like, what can I go do? What can I be productive? What could I launch? What could I, cause it's like, I can do anything. And when you learn how to do this and you become that person, I can launch a new business today and have it profitable literally tomorrow with like no paid ads, no audience, none of that. Cause you don't, all those things are amplifiers. And when you learn the skills and you've got the right tools, I love that. I kind of call it like the tool set, the skill set, and the mindset. The, the three elements that kind of, you need the tools, you need the picks and shovels and the hammers, right? You need the skill set, you need the perspective about perseverance and, and being persistent and consistent and all those things. Um, but then the skill set is just like, what are the tactics? What do I need? Landing page. How do I get, uh, how do I build a lead magnet? Or how do I get another small product that can lead to a higher ticket product? How do I create solutions? And so actually when I have to like calm myself down whenever I get spare time, cause I'm like, okay, don't get distracted, focus, like go fishing or something that is not related at all to business. Cause I would just be out starting businesses every day. Yeah. It's, um, uh, it's the burden of the red pill. Like yeah. <laughs> you really see the world as it is and you you're can't not, unsee it. You yeah. can't unsee it. And it is, it, I totally get that, man. It's like, I'm so glad I have a three-year-old. Mm. She's always available for me to do really, really meaningful stuff with that gets me away from doing exactly what you just said. I want to go crazy when I have no more kids to play with. Like, like you said, I, it'll have to be fishing or I don't know. Maybe I'll just go to the gym a second time every day. I don't know. I'm going to have to have something because it is. Once you see it, it's everywhere. I had lunch with a buddy of mine yesterday and for an hour, and, and it was, I was like, oh crap, I'm late. I got to go. We went like 10 minutes over because I had an interview. Um, we just, all we did was talk. He's like, he's got like a, this software that he developed that uh, essentially allows you, if you, have a, if you have a content site, I mean, listen to this. It's like, and, and he, all he, and this is a great example. All he did was solve his own problem. He has a content site. Mm -hmm. uh, he owns the biggest news site here in my town where I live. And he, he was like a lot of what's happening a lot of times, you know, his revenue source is that he, he has ads on his site. Right. But like 60% of the people that come to his site have ad blockers, mm. which means those ads are never serving, which means he's not getting paid for impressions or clicks. Ah. So, you know, ad blocking software is literally gutting his business. Yeah. So he's like, okay, well, what if I built a little piece of JavaScript that could essentially over whenever somebody has an ad blocker, it would tell them, you know, either if you want to view this content, you have to disable your, if you want to view the, the articles, the content that you're here for, you have to disable your ad blocker 
or you have to make a, a financial contribution because this is an ad supported site. And it's blowing up, dude. Big news sites everywhere picking. All he did was solve his own problem with like yeah. five lines of code. Yeah. But he paid a developer in Mexico like yeah. $6,000 to create. And now he's got a million dollar business. And dude, so here's, here's my thing. And I want your opinion on this. There's a lot of people and there's nothing wrong with being an affiliate or a networker or you're doing something where you're selling other people's stuff, right? That there's a huge industry there. And, and, it's, where, and it's where you should potentially where you should start so you can learn all the skills that allow you to grow a business. Without the distractions because what that will do will expose your weaknesses quickly, like very quickly. Right. And you only need to focus on sales. And so that's great. My, my question and what I'm trying to figure out is like who should or when should you really create your own thing and pivot away from selling other people to own the cart? Like when does that pivot need to happen yeah. for people? That's a great question. And, and, I, and I say that because I advocate for it so often and so rarely do people do it. But yeah. when they, you know, it's a, it's a tough uh, question that to is ask. a really tough question. And like all tough questions, that probably means it's a really valuable question that should be asked and answered. Um, yeah, it would be cool to define, okay, what are, well, first of all, you, you know, how long should you take the lower, the, the path of less resistance, which is not doing that? Well, definitely until you've learned to get leads to an offer, until you've learned to manage the opportunity that does come from doing that, which is to build a list and then, and then use your own marketing skills to promote additional offers to that list. So, I mean, that, and, and just so you know, I mean, this is episode, I think, number 32 I mean, forgive me if I'm off by one because my graphic designer has to, he's the one who actually has to be right when he creates the, the image. But um, somewhere around that, every single person I have on the show, I always ask them like, so where would you tell the person who's aspirational, who's, who's following their dream, but they don't have skills and they may not have a ton of resources yet, where should you tell them to start? And I think we're batting a thousand on saying affiliate marketing, promoting other people's products where you don't have to, like you said, create all this stuff and manage all this stuff and build infrastructure and get lost in these weeds that don't pay you. Mm -hmm. um, but your question is, okay, when should you graduate? And, and I would argue, especially in the world that we live in, I think, this is, I think it's, it's intensified in this direction. It's more so now than it was even when we started, is you should graduate as soon as you can, I believe, as soon as you can without a, you know, cutting your legs off in terms of your life, like hurting your income or, you know, making your life unsustainable and B, as soon as you can competently graduate, you should like basically once you can pass the final exams, you should, you should, and you should get your cap, right. Or your diploma. So metaphorically, what does that look like? I mean, cause that's why people, I know that's why some people at least listen to the show is like, well, what's my plan? Yeah. Are you saying potentially your plan should be become, and by the way, if you, if you agree with me, you're totally validating my Entra's like plan for people. So feel free to agree. Would you say your plan, the plans for people should be like, okay, use the affiliate marketing and potentially network marketing platforms, which are allow you to, to develop your marketing and sales skills or really your marketing skills even more than your sales skills. Marketing first to get to do lead gen and then potentially sales to follow up with your list and sell more stuff to them until you get good at it and you have a, a, a base that you can live from or operate from, even if it's in conjunction with a job. And then as soon as you can, you should move into developing your own products, packaging your own information, creating your own course, selling your own services, maybe as an agency, any of those other business models that are a little more quote real businesses. Yeah. I mean, and even to break this down, we could turn this into a soundbite because I would, some people say like, all right, what do I do? Like they love it. They got the mindset. They're like, yeah, I'm going to push it. I have the persistence, but what do I do? Here would be the business plan in a box. It would be you start with, a, with an affiliate product that you're passionate about, that that product actually solves your problem because people will buy that product from you because it helps solve a problem and your story is the conduit by which they make a purchase. They're like, I want what you got by experiencing that journey. Right. If it's a if it's a weight loss product and you lost a ton of weight or a course or whatever, try it first before you promote it, people. Right. Try 
like go get a result with it. Do you like it? Would you put your name on this product? Cause that's what you're doing when you're an affiliate and then learn to sell that product through your story. The best pivot that you can make from that into this kind of graduation scenario while you're still doing that, like generate five, you know, two, five, 10 K a month or whatever in affiliate commissions, right. To get that thing going or in sales, whatever the cap is, I call it the, um, kind of like your freedom number. What's the number by which you can say, all right, I don't need to have a nine to five, which by the way, is not that difficult to, to overcome, right? If you and I wanted to go do anything and make an extra five grand a month, it'd be done in a week, right? And we'd be making five grand a month. It's mm-hmm. very possible with the skill set. Which is purely a function of our skill sets. Just yeah, for yeah not, not because it's- connections. It's not because of our <laughs> intellectual property. It's just because of our skills. Yeah, I wouldn't, I could hide in a cave with a laptop and internet connection and make a 5K per month Like, right. So, and it doesn't mean that it's simple, but it's easy. Right. Or the other way around. We have money. Yeah. Right. I I could go find someone right now and say, I want 10% of the increased revenue of your business. Let me rewrite your sales letter. And as soon within a week of them launching, I'd be making enough. I could comfortably live. Yeah, exactly. So, so then that, that, that pivot of knowing, okay, great. So now I know the story. Now I know why people are buying this product probably the best pivot to that is to go make a better mousetrap or another kind of me too product, right? To create something that is in that lane. If it's in the weight loss, do something in weight loss. If it's in copywriting, do something in copywriting. If, if it happens to be a software, either expand the list of your software that you're referring people to, bundle them together, or even go out and develop your own software, right? Yeah. I happen to be developing software and it's one of the most laborious, expensive, yeah. difficult things to do, but it's, it's like what's aligned with me. And I've used so many softwares that couldn't solve my problem in your, in their case, maybe it's like, I've tried so many weight loss programs or diets or whatever, and none of them worked until this one. Suddenly it's like, how can you create your own version of that? Sell that to the same audience. And suddenly you're making a hundred percent instead of 20, 30, 40% commission. Mm-hmm. You just gave yourself a, a, 200% raise by selling the same thing to the same audience, but you own the cart. So we don't have to like make this huge, like now I'm in this, like when you go to college and you learn a certain thing, you go to university or you learn a certain skill set, you don't suddenly graduate and leave and go do something completely different. You right. stay in that lane in that industry, right? right. Same thing with the affiliate or, you know, selling anyone else's stuff. Keep doing what you're doing there. Cause you're learning the language. You, You learn the audience, you learn the pain points, you learn how to sell it, and then you just scale if you ever, you know. But even some of the best affiliates in in the world that I know right now have their own business and infrastructure with lots of affiliate products. So technically, they're an affiliate marketer, but they have their own courses, they have their own trainings, their own Facebook group, a value add on top of the products, right? And so all of that is passive and this part is active. Yeah, it's like... You know, people, people are like, well, but what would I create? What would I sell? What would I train on? Well, to those same people, if you said, are you consistently or are, are you ever frustrated with anything? Yeah. And the answer is like, especially with that group of people, they're like, yeah, man, I'm frustrated all the time. That's why I'm bitching, right? <laughs> okay. Pick one thing you're frustrated about. Take what Jordo said, which is that there are no, you know, unique problems. And so if you're frustrated about it, there's probably at least 100,000 other people that are frustrated about it. Figure that shit out. Don't be lazy. Keep at it until you figure it out. And then tell the world how you figure it out and create a product out of it or there, a service there, or training. So if you're yes. frustrated, you already know everything you need to know about how to make money online. And you know your headline. I was frustrated and, or struggling with this. Yep. I got this mechanism and it gave me X, Y, or Z result. There's your headline. There's copywriting 101. Which like, by the way, tell, I mean, I'll say mine, you say yours. Yeah. I was frustrated because all the programs online that talked about how to build a business didn't really talk about what it takes to succeed at building a business online. Hmm. What's yours? So you did, ex- yeah, you created. Exactly. So, I, I took all the other stuff I was using to supplement my education to become the person that, that would succeed online. And I built it all into one educational program that will not just teach you how to do it, but also how to become the person that can succeed at doing it. Hmm. I was frustrated about building businesses on the greatest infrastructure on earth, which is WordPress. 
but how difficult and technical it, it was and how expensive other funnel builders were to kind of duct tape it all together. So I had to create a lot of things and bring them into one spot. So I created drop funnels to give the world's first all in one unlimited code free infrastructure to grow and scale any brand using the power of WordPress. So really the, this framework is like, I think that one single piece, and I think you, you nailed it because this all makes sense. I'm sure to people, I want, I want to do something, right? I want to create a product. I want to create a solution. I have this frustration. This is that, that gap of opportunity, that bridge, yeah. which is like, you need to go in the workshop, like go in the basement, start tinkering, inventing, creating, failing, testing different things. What was the, the latest, she, the, the, the woman who invented Spanx? It was something like a thousand different iterations of that. Edison with the light bulb. I mean, Airbnb, all of these My My friend Bruce who invented the Breathe Right strip because he wanted yeah. to sleep in a bed with his wife, but he snored so loud she wasn't letting him. So how many, how many tests did it take him? I don't did know he, how many prototypes, but I know it was five years in his basement. So like five years of sleeping on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's a huge pain. And, and right? three and three patents. And this is a guy that studied electric. Uh, he was an electrician in the army, taught himself about adhesives, created a special type of adhesive that would stick to the oiliest part of the body without tearing the skin. Mm. He taught me about the three properties of adhesives, cleaving, adhesion, and shearing. And he had to balance those molecular properties and, and get something to attach for eight hours to the oiliest part of the body, but without ripping your skin, skin off when it was time to take it off. Just fix your problem, bro, and then sell it. By the way, $2.1 two, two billion, the Breathe Right brand sold to Glaxo. And this is what we're talking about. People are like, oh, I just want to make $5,000 a month. I'm like, you dream too small. Your yeah. dreams suck. You need to go back and dream better and drink, dream bigger. And because like you're going to normalize such a low standard that once you hit 5k, you're going to be so unfulfilled. You think that's going to set you free. You're going to be so lazy at that point. Like, Oh, I thought I was going to be happier. Well, no, the money's not going to 5,000 a month is going to do nothing for you. You're going to be because numbers are infinite. It never stops. You've got to dream bigger than that. You know, you have to like, normalize to something great and say, I'm willing to put in, I asked this question to a lot of people, how long are you willing to work at this to make this work for you? How long are you willing to feed into a relationship without pulling out a withdrawal? Which mm -hmm. is what your bank account is doing, right? To right. shove so much in there, by the way, no one can do this for you. No funnel system, no, no magic hack, no like little tactic can solve all of your problems, right? Everything is a one-to-one -one uh, solution. You need to have an, an arsenal of, of, uh, of solutions to help you face myriad of problems. But yeah, man, I, I am so excited. I, I, uh, I always mention this, this use case of this kid, Brandon, uh, Grant, uh, one of my kind of students and we helped build a funnel for him. He's in the septic business. He's 25 and he, and he's, his dad and his brother, they work in a septic. It's like, they literally have the crappiest job in any industry. Right. And they are literally, in a space that it's total red ocean. It's like, you are going to compare yourself commodity wise mm -hmm. to every other septic bus business out there. Right? So they're in a space like we need to innovate, innovate or die. We're just going to be doing the same thing. Always be struggling for more people to just pump their septics, maybe get an install here and there. I'm like, dude, we need to do something different. So we crafted this new thing just to pivot a little bit to change. So we said, what's the biggest problem? Perfect uh, case. Uh, kind of case study here. What is the problem that septic owners face? And I, I have a septic system at my house. I'm on well and septic. Uh, what do they face? Well, they don't want to maintain it. They don't want to touch it and they don't want to replace it, right? Replacing it is like 10 or $20,000 to replace a septic system. It's a huge disaster. I don't want it to overflow. It's this huge liability. He's got this system you can add in on top that you'll never need to replace it, never need to maintain it and never need to pump it again. It's literally a miracle pill. Now, imagine having to create that. Well, okay, first you need to Id identify what do people want to solve and then create the thing that solves the problem. Then when he gets on calls, he's getting an 80% close ratio right now from five to $10,000 in new installs. 80% of his calls closing 
he spent something like in his initial test, 400 bucks on ads to make 42,000 in sales. Mm-hmm. He's hiring on his third employee since the last 30 days. He had to turn his ads off. He turned his ads off because he's being too successful. Mm-hmm. He's making too much money that, so it's like people are only suffering with their own, uh, man, their own barriers that's put around themselves and their mind and their, their perspective and their possibility and their potential. Cause like if someone can be in the cave for five years to invent a breed red strip or can create some new way to solve a septic problem, if, if you are going to reinvent digital education, if I'm going to go out and create the world's first system that does what this does, then the problem, then the thing is like, you don't even have to advertise. People are going to come to you and they're going to buy it from you in droves because it's literally solving the problem. And, and here's the, the undercurrent of all this is all these things you just said, creating your software, me launching my education company, your, your buddy, you know, innovating the septic industry in a, in a novel way. My friend spending five years inventing the breathe right strip. People say, yeah, but those things are all really hard. Those things in and of themselves are not actually hard. The endurance and the stamina and the drive and the pain tolerance of doing everything that it took to get to the point where you could do those things was hard. So for you, you're like, well, I want to create this software. Okay, well, I, what do I need to do? I need to call these developers that I know. I need to implement this basic framework that I know, which is WordPress and all these plugins and all these things I want to do and maybe layer some creative innovation on top of it. But I know how to do that. I need to create good marketing material so that I can promote this product, which I know how to do because I'm a video wizard. I'm a marketing wizard and I understand direct response. I need to be able to run ads or get the word out somehow, which I know because I'm a good marketer and I'm a good copywriter and I have relationships and I have respect so I can actually get those people to answer the phone because of previous good hard work that I did. And I need to do this other thing, which I, which like none of that was actually hard for Jordan. It might've taken a lot of hours, but it wasn't hard. But the reason it wasn't hard is because you did a whole lot of other hard crap for like 10 years to get to where the, <laughs> that wasn't that hard. Yeah. So it's not, people have to, you, people are like, I don't want, I don't want to do it. It's too hard. That's exactly why you should do it. That's the litmus test. That's the qualifier. That's the pre-approval letter that you will get the money when it's time. So learn to love it. If you, why does Entra exist? It exists for one reason, which is this one message right here. Learn to love how flipping hard it is long enough and do it long enough that when it's your time, it'll be so easy, you'd be crazy not to do it. Embrace the suck. Embrace. The obstacles of the way. We get all these like these, yeah. these, these quips. Dude, literally, I, I don't know the, the timeline. It was about eight years ago. I literally lived in low income government subsidized housing in the upper apartment paying, I think it was $4.50 a month or something like that for this crappy apartment, earning $8.50 an hour at a TV station full time, which was disgustingly low pay for the amount of hard work that I was doing right. and the value I was bringing to it. And then in the evenings, in the mornings, at every spare hour, I was honing my craft, putting in the reps, sucking every day, failing every day, just monumental failure after failure after failure. But I had a vision believing that if I and knowing that if I do this, if I stick through, I will survive longer than everyone else who's dropping off like flies. And, and, and I've not punched a clock in, gosh, six years and uh, get to run two cool companies here. And I earn more now than most surgeons mm-hmm. because I ate like a pauper and lived like uh, I, was in, I was literally living in poverty. I was living right. in that space. And by the way, not entirely because I had to, but it was knowing that if I can just stay so lean and under my means for now and build up the bank account of skills and networks and resources and connections that all of that is going to just have comp compound interest. And now it's just hockey stick growth. You know, it doesn't mean that there's no problems ever. Right. It just means that now I expect problems. I get ready for problems. I prepare for problems. And when they come, it's like, now I've got the tools to address it when inevitably it happens. Right. 
You know, I, exactly. And so as you're saying that, I'm sitting here thinking, you know, first of all, yes, 100 to everything you just said. On top of that, I'm thinking, okay, but what are people thinking in their mind? Because, you know, I'm, because I literally sell training that's value begins with a belief in possibility. I have all, I immediately go to like, well, what are all the objections, right? Mm. Especially what are all the objections from the people that are actually most qualified to do well with this? And the people you want to sell to are the people who are most likely to be successful. So the specific objections for the person who, in, let's say in my, and I think it would be similar with my, my avatar or your avatar. It's like somebody who's had some success at something. Mm -hmm. They've demonstrated discipline and follow through. Uh, they've, you know, they've demonstrated an aptitude for being able to deliver a product or a service or do at least, or a job or show up at least. Right. And what are the, what is that person's objections to what you just said? The number one thing that comes to me and actually somebody who's got at least enough disposable income to buy a thing, buy a training or buy a software, right? Like you're buying your software isn't going to mean that their power gets shut off at the end of the month. Like neither of us want that customer, right? Um, no. So, no. but what's no. that person's objection? They probably, they're probably, they may well have a family. I shouldn't say probably, but they may well have a family, right? And they, and they may well have a job. So like, well, yeah, you could live in low income housing because maybe you were young or you were single or you didn't have kids or you didn't, you know, you, what, you could live off ramen. Like, but I have a family and, and I have a job and this and that. So what I would say is, first of all, boohoo, cry me a river. All you're telling me is that it's going to be even a little bit harder for you. Unless you can show me that based on the physical limits of human potential, it's impossible. It's not an excuse. Secondly, Jordo gave what I believe was a beautiful statement about building assets toward, let's say, retirement, which is you knew that you were building a bank account full of skills. If, you, if somebody has the persuasive ability to enroll their family in the idea that, listen, babe, I mean, I, I say, babe, I'm a, I'm a man, I'm married to a woman. Come here, listen, babe. The job I'm in, the track I'm on, the world we live in, the, the monetary system we have, the rising costs of you know, inflation and standard of living and the, the, the widening of the gap of the haves and the have-nots, all these reasons, we're not going to be able to retire. The, 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 the job I have is not going to get us where we want to be in this world at the standard that we want to be at. So it's not enough for me to just keep doing what I'm doing and saving what I'm saving. I have to start saving a different kind of asset, which is skills. And this other thing that I'm going to need to do, which means maybe I'm not going to be there for bridge night. I'm not going to be going out with our friends. I'm not going to be even able to help with the kids as much. I'm, it's because I want us to have a retirement plan that's actually solvent. So help me out. Let's do this. Give me five years. You know, it, nothing. The fact that I'm asking for five years and not five weeks is how you know that I have a real plan and not just a wish. Mm -hmm. Like, learn to sell. And sell the people that matter most, which are you and your spouse. And if you suck at selling, then don't tell me you don't need this. That's actually telling me why you need all this. If you That's suck right. at selling, by the way, that job mm -hmm. you have, you'll probably be better at that if you learn to sell, right? So you'd probably so be more valuable there. If you you'd be way more valuable. And if you don't, if they don't value it, you'll be able to go find a different job where you are more valuable and you can earn more and you can solve both problems. Not enough money, not enough time. I, I guarantee you, if you have a job and you're committed to the job lifestyle, and you, and you, but you don't have enough money or enough time, if you got better at sales, you would solve both of those problems, either at the employer you're at or at a different employer. And you'd create this other possibility in your life. So, so all you're telling me is more reasons why you should do. Your objection is actually a close. And you're closing yourself. Listen to yourself, right? And so they would say, well, you lived in, in you know, low-income government housing or whatever. I said, we're not telling you that. That's what Jordo did because in any moment, you should do everything you can do within the framework of how, making it as hard as it can be to sacrifice as much as you can sacrifice to have it be to meet the goal as quickly as possible. Jor I don't think Jordo is telling you to go live in low-income government housing. I think he's telling you to find your version of that level of sacrifice. And do that. And if your wife or your kids are a problem, you might need to get better at sales and enroll them in the idea too. 
Mm -hmm. And right? maybe if you do embrace the suck for a little while, maybe a long while, maybe a medium while, you might get a break sooner than you imagine, right? Yeah. There's all these like breaks in the road where you get to win and because you were faithful and then you get to win again because you were faithful. And I saw this little meme, this little picture of this person who's digging a hole um, and there are two guys are digging a hole and one guy comes down and he's like, he's a little bit lower. Um, and he, he finally hits a, a jewel and he says, um, he, he's like, oh, hey, look, I just got my first sale or whatever. And then this other person's like, hey, what niche are you Drop shipping is the best. Here's the exact thing to do. Here's this exact affiliate plan, this exact whatever coaching plan, this exact consulting plan. It's like, even if you follow that to a T, the person who created that, even if they're 100% honest and integrous, which we hope that people are, the plan that they went through, you're not going to have the exact same experience. It could happen faster, sooner, the same, different. They're going to have like a different map. But what we should be looking for is kind of these guideposts along the way, right? And really is like that journey that um, I remember the time, I, and you and I have talked about this, the point in time where I, I made more than my parents' combined gross income, it was like a depressing moment for me. It was like, because I respected them so much, I you know really wanted to whatever, right? All those things. It was like, man, I'm no different. I'm no happier than I thought I'd be. I'd, I'm no... There's, there was no exchange. There was no, my, it's like when you get married and you walk, we walked away and we're like, do you feel different? No, I don't feel different. So it's like people shooting for goals. It's kind of a fool's errand because each goal is just a milestone along the way. Right? So I have goals, personal and professional goals. And then I know for a fact that it's just a stepping stone to the next thing. And so if people start to look at leading indicators instead of the lagging indicators, like I want to get this. In, in the same way that Jim Rohn said, don't wish that it was easier, wish that you were better. Start focusing on the leading indicators. Like, don't say, I want to know how to make $5,000 a month. Say, I want to know how to do copywriting that can produce $5,000 a month. Or I want to know how to create a product that can do X, Y, Z. I want to know how to drive traffic. I want to know how to coach people. I want to know how to sell. Mm -hmm. Any of these things will give you what you want. The results take care of themselves. But if you don't have these over here, you don't have anything to add to the equation, you're an employee for the rest of your life. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want. Uh, but I think a lot of people do want more. And that's the formula. And you're, I, love, I love what you just said because it is a conditioning thing. People are so conditioned to set targets that are, as you described, they're lagging. They're finite, first of all, and they're not causal. They're the result. And to hit those targets by a certain time in expectation of a specific reward. And the reason we're conditioned that way is because that's what we always did in school. And that's what we always do in jobs. Hey, you got three months. I need you to hit this number. And then you're going to get this bonus. But in entrepreneurship, which people overinflate what that term is. <laughs> yeah. entre the, the, I, call, I actually debated, should I actually roll with Entra as the name of my company? Because people, it's entrepreneurial. People, think, Yeah, but I'm not an entrepreneur. BS, man. Being entrepreneurial is a, is a philosophy. And I, I articulate the philosophy, in case, at least my interpretation of it, for anybody that's never thought it through before. But it's about just saying, I'm in charge. I'm in control. I'm taking full responsibility. Nobody's coming to save me. I'm going to always be harnessing all available resources and all available opportunities within an ethical framework. And I'm, an, and I'm willing to give it whatever it takes to get what I want. Unless that's not you, you're an entrepreneur. And if you want that to be you, even if you're not, it's not you yet, if you even want that to be you, you're an entrepreneur, right? So entrepreneurs don't wait three months to get their bonus. If, in fact, if you say, oh, well, hit that number within three months, I would say, well, 
just, just work. You got 24 hours a day. Give it what you have to give it what you can to try to hit it in one month or hit it in three weeks or just, just be hitting it every day a little bit faster than you were the day before because Mm -hmm. acceleration is really, really powerful. And then when you, but before you even get to the number, adjust the target. Right. Or, and like, like you said, what I love that you said is it's like in, in, you know, in a very specific example, it's like, don't be focusing on how much money you're going to be making from your funnel be focusing on the conversions you can get from your funnel. Because if you get, get, con- if you get the conversions where you need to be, then you can actually go spend more money mm. and just be constantly making more and more and more and more money. And as long as the conversions hold, putting a, putting a number on it is arbitrary. Well, I want to make a million dollars a month. Well, why would you stop there if the conversions haven't dipped yet? Yeah, yeah. Right? It's like, like people launch something and then like they might have a funnel and say, if this makes X, Y, Z, if this makes this, then I'll do this. Right? It's like the chicken and egg waiting for an external circumstance to affect my, my internal action. And it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's pretty absurd. So yeah, focusing on those leading things. What does it cost for a click? What's it cost for a lead? What's it cost for a conversion? Does, is that conversion profitable? What can you do on the back end for that, right? I was talking with a, a buddy this morning about, like, uh, about his funnel. I was like, dude, it's so long and drawn out. Let's just simplify the whole thing. It was like this upsells and cross sells and all this stuff and whatever. I was like, okay, what do you want more of? High ticket buyers. Okay, great. How do you want to get them there? Well, I've got a book. Okay, great. You're going to sell your book digital. You're going to give an order bump for a physical. And on the thank you page of the, of the checkout whole thing, on the thank you page itself, it seems like an upsell, but it's a, to book a call. The yeah. path to getting them is a leading measure, a an invitation to get onto a call. And if I only focus on getting as many front end people as I can to do as many invitations as I can to book a call, get on those calls and make as many offers as possible. You are, you are printing money. You're just printing money. In fact, all we talk about is like, how much can we spend to get as many calls? Like how do we get calls, get calls, get calls. And when you start to focus on like, if I get calls, I make money you start to incentivize yourself for the leading indicators, right? Yeah, so I so much appreciate the way you're framing this, lagging indicators versus leading indicators. And (laughs) I love it because, I love when we talk because, you know, we're always fighting similar battles, like you and I, right? Um, You know, conversions, grow. essentially the battle is figuring out what the leading indicators are, first of all, which is a process, you know, that I think is easier to do once you've defined what it, you know, that it is and what it is. you and I sort of instinctively do it because we've been in this game so long, but I love that you just put a label on it. I actually hadn't actually thought about it with those words. But, you know, when I started the Entra uh, journey, you know, I started it with this blitz of content creation that dates back to September 2018 that I'm sure you remember because it was when to all but a few people like yourself, Jeff lost his mind. Jeff must have had like a nervous breakdown because now he's just ranting and making videos all the time, right? <laughs> but you, you know, you knew kind of what I was trying to do. But we didn't actually start trying to sell anything on the on the back of that until June 2019. And I'm, I'm looking at the numbers over here on my other screen. From June 2019 to February 2020, so June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January. So it was nine months. We, our, our revenue stayed within a very tight range. We never actually grew the business at all. We were just spending enough. I was just spending enough money on the ads coupled with the content that I was creating and the money I was spending to boost some of that content. And it was all for the purpose of just like, let the world know that Jeff exists so they can start to form an opinion about whether they like him or dislike him. And by the way, there are a lot of people that have either or of those two opinions and, and they, they're equally vocal about it. So, you know, don't be thin skinned. It's part of yeah. it. Yeah, all right. But, uh, but for nine months, we like literally we never grew anything. And the reason, and you've given me the language for it, but now I know what was happening. We were only concerned with one leading indicator, which is crea- creating a pro- an optimized process that got conversions to a certain point. Because of what you said, once you get to that point, and, and it's different for everybody, like you said, maybe it's getting a certain level of proficiency at writing copy. Maybe it's, uh, you know, getting a certain ability to deliver a service 
at a certain speed that like we know that if we can do this for people within three days that will be the fastest solution on the market and we can go to market calling ourselves the fastest and that'll be the you know the the switch that flips that allows us to scale or what you know everybody's got their thing but whatever your leading indicator is for us we spent nine months trying to find it and we found it in february it's june we've grown 750 percent in four months yikes because we got, we finally, after nine months, and when I talk about nine months, I shouldn't say nine months, I should say 274 days or whatever it was. I should say 4,600 hours or whatever it was because every minute for those nine months felt like an hour because we were so <laughs> obsessively focused on that leading indicator. I feel like I was my friend in his basement trying to get his adhesives and his little plastic spine right to not rip his nose skin off like it's just that ugh, focus that fixation yeah. because yep. when you get the leading indicator dialed now people go oh man this jeff guy's everywhere he's grown 750 percent in four months that's no fair that's no fair well never mind the nine months what about the, the 20 years right yep I'm not, I'm not apologizing for it and and i know you're not apologizing for what you're doing right now yeah like, i don't think I, and I mean, I, I, for some people that they might watch this and say, oh, that's so long. I couldn't possibly invest that. I think what's, what's oh, you just wouldn't don't say you yeah. couldn't. You just, wouldn't. yeah, you just won't like what's your alternative. What's the escape plan? Yeah. For, 40 years. Yeah. On a, yeah. On a myth that it's going to achieve X that look at the math. It probably won't. We've seen how it fails, how people's entire life dreams and savings wiped out in a single day 30 percent unemployment and by the way in those same four months 30 percent of the united states lost their job we've had record months while everything else has been falling yeah, apart. you guys are crushing it too i am i new and part of it's because we're cookied for each other's offers my news feed all i see in my news feed is me and you <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hate it. I hate seeing my own face, but I don't want to hide it because I don't want to like give myself a negative score. So I have to look at my own face and my own ads. Yeah, I'm, don't I'm block your own ads, man. Don't block your own I'm ads. Like, see not... more of these. See more of these. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm looking at my numbers right now. In fact, I'm learning um, what we're recognizing. This is something that people can, can understand. Um, so right now we have about the same, about 10 to 20% conversion on our landing page, right? We've got a pretty good landing page, right? to a free trial conversion. Right. right now, we have what's called an attribution window. These are all, so this is gonna sound advanced for anyone who might, might be watching it and, and maybe you're new or whatever. We're saying that like an attribution window would be how long does it take someone to buy from you based on when they see you first. So right. when do people hear about Jeff and then buy from Jeff later, right? In our case, it costs me $165 right now to get a free trial within seven days so that's expensive like to get someone Which on a Facebook free trial. only lets you track attribution for one in seven days well and there so there's there's like a 20 and these the, i'm letting the tracking geniuses do their thing and they just tell me the numbers i don't right, know the right. okay. specifics but i can tell you this is if i played the game not to lose instead of the game playing the game to win i would say shut that off 165 bucks for a trial are you kidding me i'm not even making any money i'm losing money on every trial. It's too expensive. However, uh, we've had 54 trials in the last 30 days in a 30 day attribution at $62. Meaning that mm. if I am willing to wait long enough and keep doing this and not quit after seven days, and maybe for you watching this, it's a week, maybe it's a month, maybe it's like, oh, I've been doing this a year. I don't care what the number is. If you are willing to dig longer you will see everything improve. You, it's a human impossibility to have constant human force and not see something move. It is impossible. You can punch a brick wall long enough and you will break through that brick wall, period. There, it, it's like hard stop, it's going to happen. So if I gave up after a week, I'd be like, oh, there's no way I can spend 165 bucks for a free trial. You've got to be kidding me. It's way too expensive. Well, now we wait 30 days and it's 62 62 bucks for a conversion after 30 days or around that 30 day mark. I need to wait that long. And then I've got someone on for a year after that. It means that I'm spending $62 to make whatever, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 
what else is going to happen in the background for every new user, right? It's like pressure and longevity. And you create that. If, if anyone wants a book recommendation, it's called Willpower Doesn't Work. And that's the context of the whole book, right? Well, your willpower doesn't work. You need to create yourself an environment that, that helps you produce the things that matter. It's another book, Measure What Matters, right? To be focusing on those leading indicators, the things that really push the results, not thinking, oh, I hope I make $5,000 this month. Make it an inevitability by setting yourself up on the front, right? If I'm a realtor and I'm not out showing 20 houses in a month, I'm not going to make 10 grand. If I show 200 houses in a month, I'm going to make 100 grand. So how many houses do I want to show, right? Mm -hmm. How hard do I want to push? And I know when we, just like you did, you dial in that front end and that's all you focus on. You don't, the results will take care of themselves. It's only in the front. How do I get, what do I do in my actions, my daily activities, my advertising, my skill set, my optimization, any of those things. And then just, I kind of peek over my shoulder at like what's happening back there. I don't focus on it daily. I don't read support tickets. I don't watch exit interview, like why people leave or cancel or any of that. I just like peek over on that side. I also, on the other side, don't say, I don't track how long people are on the platform. I don't do any of the like, what's like the average, like blah, blah, all of that. I'm just saying leading indicators. What are the things that help me to get good people in? And then I just peek and make sure that it's going well over there, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, you're riding a roller coaster. You're in the front seat and it's like, is the guy in the back good? He's good. Okay, keep going. Right. You know? So, yeah, I love metaphors in case you can't tell. I yeah, think well, you're the chief metaphor officer. <laughs> you know, you know that um, metaphorical metric. Yeah, that's right. You know that I do too, and and it's it's funny what you're saying. Again, I think because we've been on similar journeys for the last couple years, you know, and 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 approached it with very similar philosophies because we come from very, frankly, conjoined backgrounds and history. I mean, we've, we've overlapped a lot, right? Um, so I don't think it's a coincidence that we, we tend to approach things the same way. When I started Entra, and again, you knew what I was doing. I mean, for the record, Jordo, I was on the phone with you when the light bulb went off of the name Entra, right? Like that was a, we created that name together on a phone call. Like, and then Entra, got the domain like that day. Entrainstitute.com. Entra it was like five or 10 grand. I don't remember what it was, but it wasn't like a free domain or a $9 domain. But I was like, that's a good name. And you're like, and, and I, frankly, I know that when you agree with me about something, it's probably a good idea. And yeah. <laughs> you both said that's a good name. So I'm like, okay, we should get that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, actually, I remember it was February 2018. I, re I, I registered that domain. Yep. September, I started creating all this content. And what I, I remember, I had looked at a guy named Jeffrey Starr, who's mm. the uh, guy on YouTube that he did the makeup tutorials for like five years and built a huge following. And then he launched his own cosmetics line and it's worth like $200 million in like, you know, 18 months or something, right? It was like Kylie Jenner, only you didn't say, oh, well, that's Kylie Jenner. He came from the cardiac. Like Jeffrey Starr was, oh, that's, but where did this guy come from? He, yeah. he was like Kylie Jenner, only with no previous origin story. Like he just came out of nowhere, right? But he did it because he spent five years online doing makeup tutorials. And I remember looking at that and going, okay, that's awesome. But what can I do to compress five years? Because literally I don't have five years because of what was happening in some other businesses. And I was like, well, what I can do is I can increase the rate of exposure by actually spending money to boost my content. Instead of just giving free value, let me give free value and then actually spend money to get that free value in front of more people. And I was boosting videos. I was getting these, these free videos that are like me talking about a lesson I learned playing with my kids. And you look at it and it, and it would have like 400,000 views. And it's not because it got shared 400,000 times. It's because I was literally spending money putting it in people's feeds, getting like making, sometimes making people crazy. They're like, why is this asshole showing up in my feed? I did not ask to see this. I don't know who he is. Nobody <laughs> shared it with me. He's talking yeah. about his kids. I don't care about his kids. And hey, 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 let me call him, a, you know, a piece of crap. Let me, let me tear him down. Like, let me troll him. Let me go look him up and, and tell him he's a loser. Like, like it, it wasn't, I didn't do it because it was going to be like emotionally gratifying or fun. It wasn't because I'm, I'm an egomaniac and I wanted everybody, oh, look at me. It's because I knew that the only way to compress the Jeffrey Star experiment was to increase the rate of exposure. And the only way to do that, frankly, 
uh, if you don't have the luxury of time, is to spend some money. And, and by, by the way, as a, as a caveat to that, or an addendum, Jeffree Star literally crashed the Shopify servers. Yeah. Something like 80 million in sales in a day, or whatever it was, this crazy huge amount of sales crashing all of Shopify with his launch. That's the power of five years of time, yeah. asking for nothing, depositing, 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 and then doing a withdrawal five years later and crashing yeah. Shopify. So yeah. he validated the concept. He validated the potential of the concept by crap, you know, 80 million in a day, right? And so I went and I was like, well, let me try to compress time. Spent this money for nine months, took all the flack, got all the attacks, but I built, there's a lot, there were hundreds of thousands of people who like, at least they would recognize me, which increased the likelihood that they would watch my ad if it popped up in their feed. So like, wait, I've seen this guy before, right? Even if they didn't know where. So I did that for nine months. And so again, you know, I'm now two, about two years into this experiment with, you know, hockey stick growth. But it's because I did what you're describing. Like a, a, a level of effort and consistency. You know, the other thing was he was doing a couple tutorials a week. I shot 400 videos in my first year. They were, they were long. They were, some of them were researched. Every one of them, I had to sit there and think, what am I going to talk about? And I would kind of organize my thoughts and create a little outline. I did that 400 times in a year. And, and it's like, it was crazy. I look back on it and I was like, that was crazy. But, but I knew the value of having solved my own problem. And when you're clear on that and you knew the value, like, I mean, it's to be able to deploy in a WordPress infrastructure quickly without plugins, without developers, something that's customizable that accomplishes the dual goals of having an optimized authority site coupled with sales funnels that work. That's it. I mean, yep. you didn't maybe crash, crash Shopify, but you, 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 break the, you break a paradigm on the internet when you create that. Yeah, and so and did you work on it? Did you spend a crap load of your own money on it? Did you have to go way beyond what you think most people would have been willing to do? All the dollars, all the money, but I mean, you, you decide, what, what did you say? I, I don't know who the quote is attributed to, but you rise to your level of dissatisfaction. Yeah. So what happens it's in like, most jobs only then you, and then you don't get promoted anymore. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like our, our willingness, like, what are you willing to do? And uh, yeah, so I think, yeah, all this stuff is so, it's so like existential and ethereal for at a high level. But when it gets down to tactics, it's like your, your results will reflect who you are and what you do. So what you just said, it's also existential and ethereal. I say that all the time. And when I know, I'm not going to say this is what's going on for you. When I say it, it feels like a little bit of an apology. Like I'm like, well, my audience is listening and they really, what they really want is for me to just tell them the website or tell them the software or tell them the product or tell them the funnel or tell them the, the magic copy bullet. And so let me just sort of qualify what I just said with a little bit of an apology. Like I know that's existential. I know that's ethereal. I know it's philosophical. I know it's metaphysical. I know it's the fucking truth. <laughs> yeah. I know. Can we know. stop apologizing? I'm only speaking for me. Can I stop apologizing? Drop the mic, bro. Drop the mic. Yeah, it's like we're... David Goggins and Jocko Willink do a mm -hmm. better job of teaching internet marketing because they talk about overcoming and persevering really hard crap as former Navy SEALs than most actual internet marketers. That's why, that's why I have their books on my shelf. You know what? I don't have any books on my shelf by... Mike Fulsame or I don't even have Brunson's books on my shelf. I don't want to read about internet marketing. Me it's, neither. it's annoying. It irritates me because it all gets easy because the Jeffrey star already told us what we need to do. This weird eccentric makeup guy, right? Give a crap load of value longer than most people are willing to until you build an amount of goodwill that most people never will and then sell your crap. Only make it not crap. Make it not crap. Hopefully it's really good. <laughs> that's it. That's, I could, I'm going to publish that as a book that's going to be, it's going to be handwritten scribble on a page. Yeah, one, it's one page long. It's yeah. called Give a Crap. 
Yeah, exactly. Anyway, so hey, listen, man, <laughs> this is this is like every time we talk. This doesn't feel like oh, we just recorded a show. This is I know. I actually literally just forgot we were recording. I thought we were just talking. <laughs> um. So only because I actually have an appointment and I already pushed it off. I'm 30 minutes late and I, I'm not, I'll, I'll apologize to them, but I'm not really. Every single time we talk, we always go over the time. Every time. Every time. So that said, I want to make sure that we, we do get what we came for here. How do people follow you? How do they enter your world? How do they, you know, chug buckets of your Kool-Aid and fall in love? Yeah. I mean, we have a, uh drop funnels dot you know dot com is the main site we've got a we've got a great group um we're gonna make sure that you get your uh, authority site built right in i've got a migration team whatever they design let's just let's just get it in there and and then start my, so my goal when my designer's done with my blog i can just call you and you'll you'll pull it over build it in yeah like <sighs> so good we're just our goal is to make life easy so much easier than it needs to be right now, right? You're like the apple of funny bu funnel builders. They, isn't their mantra, they use technology to make life better? So good. And it needs to be simple and clean and as fast as possible. Hey, I'll tell you this. And, and uh, I know we're kind of time stamping this whole thing and whatnot now, but we literally just created, because we obviously have a major competitor in ClickFunnels, although I think and know, and all of our users who are here say we do it so much better. Um, we just created our first click funnels to drop funnels AI conversion. And as in we took a click funnels page, hit a button, and then it turns it into our infrastructure, which is can organically rank, have domain reputation, um, have more modules than you'll ever have in, in CF, faster pages, all of that with a click of a button. And by the so, way, faster pages equals lower ad costs. Yeah, so and, I'll say that. and more you conversion. Don't want to say that? I'll say that. Yeah, if, if your pages are loading at 8, 10, 15, 30 seconds, you are losing money, period. Like, yeah. there's, there's no doubt. So, yeah, Drop Funnels is a great place to connect and we'd love to have you in, uh, in, in our group too and start talking about greatness and excellence. And I think, yeah, I think that's right on. I'm going to continue to talk that about- A Facebook group too, where, I mean, yeah. and I was going to say this, if we had more time, I'd say more about it. But one of the reasons that your attribution window improves the longer you extend it is because you give so much value to people that the more time they have to research you and the more time they have to be indoctrinated and impacted by you, the more they go, yeah, I will buy his thing because he's a good guy and he helps me. That you can always tell the people that give the most value are the people who, who's, I mean, in a technical way, whose attribution window can lengthen in a, and reflect a positive the people who don't give enough value, you lose when people go look you up and, and watch your stuff or try to watch your stuff, which isn't there because you haven't been giving enough. Because you don't exist. Yeah. 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 That's why I spent nine months and shot 400 videos because now I thought, well, who are my competitors in that space of trying to launch a, a Me Too business education product? None of them have 400 videos before they ever tried to sell anything where they talk about life and family and fitness and growth and mindset and if you want to be better, like you said, if you want to, don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. If you want to have a better result, do more than the next guy. Yeah. I mean, I'm a filmmaker and I haven't made 400 videos like in my career. Yeah, I'm <laughs> up to like 600 now. So. That's a monumental that's thing. That's not counting all these interviews. So, that a man. Just, the thing is, you got to love it, dude. Like, you love have to love it. Serving. I don't love... I just, I love the result. I love the, the result of one person, one kid, one, I get 14 year old kids in, in, in countries. I wouldn't say I've never heard of them cause I'm kind of a geography nerd, but countries I haven't thought about in years since I looked at a world map, hit me up and be like that one video. It just, man, that really helped me in a time I need it or, or whatever. Like I love that result. It's so worth it. It's not easy. It's just worth it. That's the kind of stuff. Even when you have all the money in the world, all the, all the stuff, all the toys and all that, it's the stuff that you'll remember more. That's a treasure. So you guys, so just to, to put a bow on yeah. it, uh, dropfunnels.com for your software. Drop, there's Drop Funnels group on Facebook. Yeah, I suggest people start there before you ever do the software, but do, before you do any of that, like just come into the free group, come get some free value, free training. And then you're going to find that through all that free stuff, we've got free premium themes and free funnels and free designs and free, we just like want to, literally to value vomit all over everybody, uh, so to speak, just to give, we want to continually give, and we know that that's going to, you know, create great results. And we're being, you know, we're becoming famous for great support 
and uh, really helping a lot of people. So start there, get into the world, embrace it, find like you'll, when you start to hang around with really cool marketers and stuff, you end up suddenly absorbing that. And there's like an osmosis that happens. So, yep, the Facebook group is there and we do lots of really cool trainings and interviews and, and, uh, and would be excited to have anyone there. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, everybody, I probably don't even have to say this at this point. I think everybody knows by now how much respect and appreciation I have for you, but I'll say it anyway. It's all true. You too, and I'm so glad to ha- that we got to have you on Millionaire Secrets, man. It's been a blast. Man, it's, it, 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 every time it's always a, a, special, a special time for me and, and very thankful to, to be here, man. You rock. For sure. All right, man. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you for watching Millionaire Secrets. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and leave us a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you know whenever we release a new episode. Also, if you want to learn the fastest way to become a millionaire in the new economy, click the link in the description below to claim your free copy of my book, The Millionaire Shortcut. And don't forget, Millionaire Secrets is available on all the major podcast platforms as well. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you can listen on the go. Thanks for watching.